Ever wondered how this tropical, gator-filled, kinda Spanish-speaking retirement home paradise ended up in the United States? Well, you're in for a wild ride through history, bordered by Georgia and Alabama to the north. It's known for its long coastline, over 1,300 miles of sandy beaches and diverse ecosystems. The state features a mix of flat lands, rolling hills in the north, and vast wetlands like the famous Everglades in the south. Florida was the first part of the contiguous United States to be explored by European settlers, and its journey to becoming a U.S. state is packed with drama, diplomacy, dark deeds, and a whole lot of map changes. The written history of Florida began with Spanish explorer Juan Ponce de Leon's voyage from his base in Puerto Rico in 1513. Although no one is sure exactly where he landed, Leon named the area La Florida, possibly as a reference to the blooming flowers that greeted him on arrival. Over the centuries, Spain attempted to colonize Florida, but these efforts were often thwarted by native resistance and other European powers. Notably in 1565, Pedro Menendez de Avila established St. Augustine, the first permanent European settlement in what is now the United States, expelling French settlers in the process. Despite setbacks such as attacks from English privateers and the destruction of missions, Spain maintained control of Florida until the British gained control in 1763 through the Treaty of Paris. British rule lasted only 20 years, during which Florida was split into East and West Florida with attempts to develop the region by attracting settlers and cultivating relations with the Seminoles. After the American Revolution, 1776 to 1783, when Florida had remained loyal to the British crown, Spain regained control of Florida from Britain as part of the Treaty of Paris. When the British evacuated Florida, Spanish colonists, settlers from the newly formed United States, and escaped slaves poured in. The favorable Spanish land grants attracted many new residents, including the Seminoles, who were encouraged to set up farms as a buffer between Spanish Florida and the United States. Instead of becoming more Spanish, Florida increasingly became more American. In the early 19th century, fresh off the success of the Louisiana Purchase, the United States was keenly interested in acquiring Florida. This ambition culminated in the adams onis Treaty of 1821, following several American military expeditions, where Spain formally ceded Florida to the United States. In 1821, President Andrew Jackson arrived in Florida to establish a new territorial government on behalf of the United States. What the U.S. inherited was a sparsely populated wilderness with settlements of Native American tribes, including the Creek, Miccosukee, and Seminole tribes, who lived alongside African American refugees who had sought sanctuary with them. Florida's appeal grew rapidly among settlers from older southern plantation areas, including Virginia, the Carolinas, and Georgia. The U.S. merged East and West Florida into one territory, with Tallahassee, established in 1824, as its new capital. Tallahassee was chosen for its central location between the existing governmental centers of St. Augustine and Pensacola. As Florida's population surged through white immigration, the federal government faced mounting pressure to remove Native Americans from their lands and eliminate safe havens for runaway slaves. Under President Andrew Jackson, the U.S. government spent $20 million and many lives to force the removal of the Seminoles. The outcome was mixed. Some Native Americans migrated voluntarily, others were captured and sent west under military guard, and a few escaped into the Everglades where they established a life away from white settlers. Today, Florida's Native American reservations include Imokali, Hollywood, Brighton, and areas along the Big Cypress Swamp. The Seminole and Miccosukee tribes maintain a presence in the state. Most Seminoles, however, refused to stand idly by and fought back fiercely against the United States government. The First Seminole War, 1817 to 1818, was sparked by old conflicts in the Seminoles' safe haven status for escaped slaves. When Britain controlled Florida, they often incited Seminoles against American settlers migrating south. These tensions, combined with the safe haven Seminoles provided black slaves, led the U.S. Army to attack the tribe. Forces under General Andrew Jackson invaded Spanish Florida attacked several key locations, and pushed the Seminoles farther south. The Second Seminole War, 1835 to 1842, often referred to as the Seminole War proper, was the fiercest conflict between the U.S. government and American Indians. After acquiring Florida, 
the U.S. pressured the Seminoles to relocate to Indian Territory, present-day Oklahoma. The Treaty of Payne's Landing, signed by a small number of Seminoles in 1832, required them to leave Florida within three years. When the U.S. Army arrived in 1835 to enforce the treaty, the Seminoles were ready for war. Led by chiefs like Micanopy, Alligator, Jumper, and Osceola, the Seminoles employed guerrilla warfare tactics against four U.S. generals and over 30,000 troops. The war left more than 1,500 soldiers and countless American civilians dead, and the U.S. government spent over $20 million fighting the Seminoles. The U.S. forces resorted to desperate measures, such as capturing Osceola during a truce under false pretenses. Despite Osceola's imprisonment and death in 1838, the Seminoles continued to resist until 1842, when hostilities nominally ended without a peace treaty. By this time, most Seminoles had been relocated to Indian Territory. The Third Seminole War, 1855 to 1858, began over land conflicts between whites and the remaining Seminoles in Florida. Constant military patrols and rewards for capturing Seminoles reduced their population to about 200 by the war's end in 1858. It was a terrible end to a group of people who had called the peninsula their home for hundreds of years prior to the arrival of European settlers. Even before the Seminole Wars were finished, Florida became the 27th state in the United States on March 3, 1845. William D. Mosley was elected as the new state's first governor, and David Levy Uly, a key advocate for statehood, became a U.S. Senator. Florida was informally divided into three areas, East Florida, Atlantic Ocean to the Suwannee River, Middle Florida between the Suwannee and Apalachicola Rivers, in West Florida, from the Apalachicola to the Perdido River. The territory's economy was primarily agricultural, with plantations in Middle Florida setting the political tone until after the Civil War. The issue of slavery soon dominated Florida's political landscape. Most Florida voters, white males aged 21 or older, supported slavery, but they were increasingly concerned about Northern opposition to the practice. Throughout the 1850s, they viewed the new anti-slavery Republican Party with suspicion. In the 1860 presidential election, no Floridians voted for Abraham Lincoln, although he won the national election. Shortly after Lincoln's election, a special convention in Florida drafted an ordinance of secession, leading to the state's withdrawal from the Union on January 10, 1861. Within weeks, Florida joined other Southern states to form the Confederate States of America. In the 25 years leading up to the Civil War, North Florida's Middle Florida region evolved into a prosperous plantation society resembling the wealthiest parts of the Old South. This area centered around Tallahassee and including Gadsden, Leon, Jefferson, Madison, and Hamilton counties expanded into Alacua and Marion counties. By 1860, it had become Florida's plantation belt, largely populated by pioneer entrepreneurs from Southern states who migrated after Florida became a U.S. territory in 1821. Middle Florida's economy was heavily reliant on slavery, with 98% of slaves engaged in agricultural labor on large cotton plantations. An elite class of planters, owning over 75% of the state's slaves, operated these plantations under a gang slavery system. In contrast, smaller farms with fewer than 10 slaves had slaves working alongside their white owners on various tasks. After the Second Seminole War in 1842, the federal government incentivized settlement in the Lower Peninsula with free land offers, leading poorer families south and leaving their land to new cotton planters. By the 1850s, South Carolinian planters dominated Marion and Hernando counties, spreading middle Florida's culture. On the eve of the Civil War, 44% of Florida's 140,400 residents were slaves. The election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860 prompted Florida's legislature, led by middle Florida planters, to call for a secession convention, resulting in Florida's secession from the Union. The Civil War disrupted slavery, especially in East and West Florida, where Union incursions offered hope for freedom. Many slaves joined the Union Army or Navy, while others in Middle Florida subtly resisted the Confederacy. During the Civil War, Florida avoided the devastation seen in other Southern states. While Union forces occupied coastal towns and forts, the interior remained under Confederate control. Florida contributed around 15,000 troops and significant supplies to the Confederacy, though over 2,000 Floridians joined the Union Army. 
Despite a Union blockade, Confederate ships managed to bring in essential supplies. Tallahassee was the only Southern capital east of the Mississippi to avoid capture, thanks to victories at Olusti, 1864, and Natural Bridge, 1865. However, the South eventually faced defeat and federal troops occupied Tallahassee on May 10, 1865. Post-war, Jacksonville and Pensacola ports flourished, former slaves were freed, and plantation owners struggled, leading to tenant farming and sharecropping. Federal Reconstruction from 1868 aimed to improve conditions for African Americans, but Democrats regained control by 1877, ending federal occupation and diminishing African American political influence. Despite the turmoil of the Seminole Wars and the Civil War, this dangling chunk of a peninsula we call Florida emerged as a unique blend of cultures and influences, shaped by its diverse population and strategic importance. So next time you're on spring break or visiting your grandparents, reflect on the veritable gator tale that is the history of the Sunshine State. Enjoyed this video? If you'd like us to cover the history of your country or state, leave a comment below and we'll try our best to create some quality content on the history of your homeland.